S S S S K vibe maker. We ain't changing tradition anytime soon, man. Today we got Los Angeles, South Central in the building, man. His name is Blast. What's going on, man? Yes, sir. What's going on? Appreciate you having me, dog. Of course, of course. You are an artist that a lot of people are starting to talk about, man. There's people that know, and there's some people that don't know. How would you break down your musical journey so far, man? Man, I started music probably like eight years ago. You know, just teaching myself at home, being bored, just learning how to record myself on YouTube. And learning how to make beats and then i fell in love with, with words putting words together so that's where it all started i mean a lot of people know you for your production work you've transitioned into the artist um was that always the plan was it always the plan to make you know that transition when you was producing in the background to one day become at the forefront yeah absolutely i mean even early on i was recording to my own beats but um i didn't really get a breakthrough until i started producing for other artists and it came full circle because, you know, my production caught up with, with with me as an artist as well. And then it was just hands on. You know what? Let's get some of the fundamentals out of the way, man. Just in case people don't know, your name is spelt with an A in, without the A in the blast. It's the X instead of the A in your name, blast. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I look, you've told the story a few times, but for those that don't know, what's the significance of the X? So originally it was blast with an A, but I, I um, intentionally turn it into an X just to be unique when you when you look it up, you know, when you um, when you search it on Google or anything, I'll be the first thing that pop up. Straight up, man. Them search queries, man. You know what I mean? Trying to search, <laughs> search blast, you get all kinds of stuff, meet your rights and all kinds of volcanic stuff. So, yeah, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> I got my L.A. top on today and everything, man. I've got family in California. I see you. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? So let's talk about headshots, man. That's a couple of years ago now in your your music um, discography. A few years back, how much would you say over the those few years you've evolved or grown as an artist? Man, tremendously. You know, uh, even headshots. It's a song where I'm just spitting straight bars. You know, back then I wasn't really comfortable with my my melodic voice, but I felt like as time grew, my voice developed to the point where I I could find my comfortable pocket. So, uh, you know, listening to Headshots is a complete transition for music that I'm dropping today. Now, you are from South Central Los Angeles, the West Coast of America, which is very renowned for its violence and its um, its trappings in the hood. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, paint a picture um, about the, the particular place in South Central where you are from, man. Yes, yeah, so I'm from the east side of L.A., um, South Central, 75th and Central. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, think about it as violence. But it's actually beautiful, you know, at the same time, just like every other hood, it's a beautiful place, but you got your your places you don't supposed to go to, you know, your certain areas you should know about that um, you should be cautious about. So, you know, it's just like any other hood, but LA is just the best hood. I mean, you are very much on your music journey now, man, but you've come up through those rough streets and those renowned streets. How much of a challenge was it for you to, um, to dodge the road life and make it into this legit music life yeah it was it was it was some um, hurdles i definitely came across um being that i'm the only boy in my immediate family you know so my mom was very strict and and, and stood on integrity so she 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 instilled that in us which led me to be focused you know um and then when i moved on my dad it was the same thing he was more strict and and i just had time to focus on you know one thing which was music church background was it like a religious background your parents very much into religion and that nah not, not really heavy on religion just um street codes and morals <laughs> discipline straight absolutely so it's, it's been well documented that you've produced for the likes of yg and kendrick lamar you was in the background doing your production work and um, there's a lot of producers that someday dream of making it to, to the forefront and being an artist how would you explain the transition that the challenge of the transition from being a producer to then being an artist? Um, I think it's just all based on authenticity, you know? It's it's rare that you, you see your, your favorite producer transition as a, a forefront artist, like on the same level. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it relies on my authenticity. Like I'm not trying to do something, uh, it's not forceful, This is, it's in me, it's in my DNA. So just be a hundred with yourself at all times. How much did it take for you to make those people that saw you as a producer before take you serious as the artist on the mic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was a, a, a rough transition. I feel like, you know, once you hear me, once you hear my music, 
first listen, it feels like you already heard it before. It's it's easily digestible, relatable, and um, that's how I feel like people uh, gravitated to it in the first place. So overrated. <laughs> um, the big line that I think speaks out, the, the big line which I think um, sticks out for a lot of people is just give me loyalty because love is overrated. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a line mm. that, I've, that sticks with me and sticks with a lot of people. Um, what are your experiences of, of love being overrated, man? Well, for me, you know, love is, is more so an emotion and loyalty is more so of an action. To me, loyalty means like just doing what you say or, or standing on what you say. And, um, you know, some, we, we all go through that where we told one thing, but something else happens. So I feel like that's a relatable topic that everybody can, you know, can rock with. Eight tracks on the EP, which you've just released not too long ago. No Love Lost. Um, you produced a whole project yourself. Um, was that something which was part of the manifesto from the beginning? Like, I'm doing this project and I'm producing the whole thing, even if somebody wants to give me a track for it. Yeah, I feel like I, um, I found a dope Sonic and um, I wanted it to be cohesive, being that it's a full body of work. And uh, it was intentional. I wanted to make my first impression a strong impression. So... Um, yeah, that was the goal to produce the entire thing and have my hands on fully so they can get a understanding of who Blast is. I mean, there's people that have heard the project and there's people that haven't heard the project. If they haven't heard the project, what do you feel like they, they should expect before they press play on this? Expect some cool vibes. I would play this during like a road trip, you know what I'm saying? With your, with your girl, lay back, smoking some good tree, you know, um, good energy. That's, that's what you should expect. The videos of this project are very cinematic, very mini movie, man. It's like, if you watch them in a sequence, you will see that they are sequential. You know what I mean? There's um, to be continued and it's continued in the next video of the, the projects, that are, the videos that have been filmed so far. Do you very much have directorial ambitions in you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, up until the point of, of these videos, I did all my post-production as well. So, you know, I'm writing treatments and literally editing videos. So it was intentional to um, to showcase the the visual just as, as, as much as we showcase the audio. Like it both has the match of quality. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to show the world like just different aesthetics of who Blast is, how I move, how I talk, because I'm not so social. So I feel like this is a, a treat for my fans to, to uh, get an inside scoop. With you so much being um, involved in the 360 of everything, you just mentioned there that you're involved in, you know, the post-production. I heard that you do some of the editing of your videos as well. Obviously, you're a songwriter, you're a rapper, you're a producer, you've not got any features on the project. Do you feel like having so much of an involvement without external involvement takes away from your gusto or your execution at all? Um. Not really, just because of the simple fact I have a team as well. And, um, you know, I have a team that plays different positions, uh, which is very important to me. Of course, I can't have a hand on everything. But as far as the creativity, it has to come from me because I'm the artist and I stand on artist integrity and I want to protect my vision, you know. So luckily, I have a team that allows me to focus directly on the art. Do you co-write often or do you write all your own material? Yeah, I write all my own material, mm. sure. So being a songwriter that writes all your own material, how do you feel about artists who are very popular and have big hits, but hardly write, or maybe don't even write anything? What's your opinion on that? I mean, you know, everybody have their, their different opinion. Mine is, does the music sound good at the end of the day? It's the results, you know? So, and I'm not really big on like credit and stuff. I, I feel like the world deserves good energy. So if, mm. if 10 people come together and make a, a good song and that's what it is you know it, it's i don't look down on that now there is a mystery around your real name and your age and i respect it do you know what i'm saying and i know <laughs> i can see that you're kind of like you can be a low-key character as well did you yeah. ever consider being an anonymous or a faceless artist that's interesting i did i definitely wanted to be like a uh not sure if you you know marshmallow yeah of course man <laughs> yeah like I like the incognito. I like I like for the fans to discover things as they go. I feel like that's art in itself, you know, just breaking mm. down codes. Mm. But yeah, I definitely considered that before. So what was the key point in your decision to maybe not go faceless and be anonymous then? I just wanted to be 100%. Like the world, either you're going to love me or you're going to hate me. And um, this is me, you know, so. 
And uh, so far, people rocking with my authenticity. So I'm, I'm rocking with it too. South Central, Los Angeles, West Coast of America. No Love Loss is the, the debut project, right? The debut solo project, right? Yes, sir. And to come in with your debut solo project and for it to be called No Love Lost, there must be very much significance in that title, man. Talk to us about the significance of that title for your project. Yeah, so I was working on this project during the uh, transition of me having my first child, my son. And, um, you know, it was a lot of trials and tribulations I was going through with friends, family and loved ones, you know, just not understanding the vision. So to me, another term for No Love Lost is No Hard Feelings. Mm -hmm. basically speaking on at the end of the day i gotta complete this mission for myself mm -hmm. gotta somehow be selfish and you know pave the way of the vision that i see so there's no mm -hmm. love lost that parenthood thing is no joke man and when you enter that club it's like you can never explain it to anyone who's they can never totally understand until they reach the parenthood club do you know what i'm saying how much of a change did it bring upon yourself as an individual when you became a parent especially having a son as well for me it's pure motivation man you realize it's, it's more than just you, you know, you have a, a, a bigger look on life. Um, you know, growing up, it was just me, me, me. Now I got to look out for somebody else before I even think about myself. So mm -hmm. it, it gives you a different appreciation. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you, um, not only as transitioning from a producer to an artist, but making an impact as a new artist in this crazy music industry? I would say just, just moving around my city being uh accessible you know i'm not like i said i'm not the most social guy so a lot of people notice noticing me now and in mm -hmm. public places is new to me i appreciate it but it's just new you know feeling people's energy dealing with different energies but um that's one that's been one of my biggest challenges like being face to face with people i see the accessibility that brings a whole nother dynamic and a challenge as well man if you're rolling around the city which you've been part of and grew up in and then you get a different type of status um people often turn their nose up against security you know having security yeah. as a, as an artist who now has status they they might think of you as being soft but a lot of the times yeah. man you know the crazy things that can happen man so what's your what's your take on having security or not as an artist that's new in the game that's obviously gaining bigger status now yeah i mean i just embrace it i embrace it all the love the hate you know um at the end of the day i'm me and my destiny is is gonna happen whether i like it or not so i don't live in fear i feel like that's the biggest thing you can't live in fear mm -hmm. and um that's just how i operate not living in fear pop smoke was an artist that was um very much in the early stages of his career he was from the east coast but sadly succumbed to some street-ish on the West Coast. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, he was very much responsible for championing the UK drill sound, um, collaborating with a lot of the, the UK producers. Are you much aware of the UK drill sound? I'm not, man. I mean, I, I know my I know a couple of artists, but I got to tap in, man. I'm not, I'm not going to cap you, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely a place I want to visit and uh, just, just learn more about the culture. Even though Pop Smoke was from the East Coast, um, he passed away in the West Coast. You know, like I said, very much part of some real street-ish. How much did that resonate or impact Los Angeles and, and your borough, man? That was big, man. It was it was heavy, you know. Um, we, we, we took Pop Smoke in like he was one of us. So we looked at him just like that. So when that happened, you know, him being so young, we felt like he never really had his, his space to grow it. To, to reach his full potential. So yeah, that was heavy on our hearts. And we was already dealing with a lot, you know, from the Nipsey thing. And um, yeah, it was tough. Americans seem to have very um, varying perceptions of the UK and London. Now off mic before we started doing this interview, you said that you haven't been to the UK. Um, yeah. So for a South Central Los Angeles native like yourself, what are your perceptions of the UK and London before you come over here, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I just feel like it's, well, just listen to the music, like the, uh, the certain music. I feel like it's grimy over there. Like, you know, y'all got y'all trenches too. Um, just a different way y'all go about things. But I feel like y'all uphold integrity and respect. Y'all stand on respect out there. And it's very, very family oriented. So that's what I look forward to. Have you started recording an album yet? Are you starting to think about an album? Yeah, I'm always in the process of recording. Um, 
definitely working towards my my uh, debut full length project. This was an EP, of course. But yeah, I'm always in that mode. What is that one artist or album that made a, a very big impact on you as you was evolving as an artist, or maybe even before that, as you was growing up as a as a young kid? I would have to say Kanye West graduation. That was a a, a big transition of like how I appreciated music mm -hmm. from the production to the message he was saying. It just stood out to me. I, I like Kanye because he always go against the grain. And that's kind of how I look at myself. I mean, it's a bit political, but are, are, are you um, in any way disappointed in um, the way that <laughs> Kanye has evolved or grown as an artist? What's your take on it, man? Uh, I mean, you got Kanye as an artist and then you got political Kanye. Like, I focus on the music. That's what that's what gravitates to me from Kanye. So mm -hmm. um, as far as that goes, he's untouchable. He's a he's an artist, and nobody can take nothing away from him. He changed the he changed the culture. So mm -hmm. yeah, and it's kind of crazy to you know hear an artist that's based in the West Coast, growing up in the West Coast, give such a homage to like an artist which is on the East Coast. Man, it's it's changed a lot. It never used to be like that. It used to be very tribal. Things have changed <laughs> a lot, man. Yeah, that's a fact. You know, we we in a new age now. We we trying to connect the world. What are some of your long-term ambitions as a, as a musician that you start thinking about over the next few years to, to do long-term? Yeah, so I, I definitely want to create my brand, which is already created and, and just built that brand, which is Eagle, to, to bring on other artists and producers and just hand over that platform, pass the torch. And um, yeah, I just want to step into that CEO hat eventually. Now, without <laughs> giving any spoilers, the No Love Lost EP um, has a mini movie which accompanies it. The videos are very cinematic. Um, I'm not going to talk about the storyline, but um, how much of that story in those videos is similar to Blast's real life? A lot of the moments in the, in the in the series of videos are actual facts, but we just exaggerated most of the scenes just to make it more appealing for the viewer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even from like the disloyalty with friends or like... Um, being crossed by, you know, your girl. Those are things that I that I went through, but mm. we just added a storyline to, to hyping it up. Listen, Blast, they say my interviews are hotter. The future's looking very bright for you, man. <laughs> and I'm happy that we've connected, man. This has to be the first of many conversations. And I look forward to you coming to the UK in maybe 2021, or by the way things are going, it could be 2022, man. Absolutely, <laughs> man. I appreciate you. You know, it's, it's, I feel like it's open arms over there, so I can't wait to touch down. SK Vibe Maker.